Hey guys, welcome back to Preview Alliance Podcast. This is Sarah. And Whitney. Okay, fun episode today, guys. It's titled. We can all relate. It's not us. It's the kids. It is. We, you know. They are the fire of the dumpster fire of my uh, life. And I I love them. It is, um, it's a topic that I think on social media, if you just looked at it, right? Like people hint and harm about it, but they're still going to post their perfect um, relationship post and, oh, we're doing these date nights. The kids didn't change us. Yeah. And you're like, I know that's a lie. So it's actually researched, okay? There's a research from Bringing Baby Home Program that showed that almost two-thirds of couples reported a decline in relationship satisfaction up to three years after having a baby. Whitney, how old are your girls? I have a six-year-old and a two-and-a-half, almost three-year-old. She'll be three uh-huh. in August. And I have a just newly two baby James. That's right. And Will will be five in August. And 100% this is verified, researched, and approved that... Yep. We can confirm. We can confirm that you are going to face relationship challenges oh, yeah. once these little love mucks come into our lives from newborn to toddler to now Whitney's in post-kindergarten. She's yeah. getting into elementary school years. Honestly, six is pretty good. She's she. We were talking this morning that, yeah. you know... My oldest... Which could I, convince her to have a, several yeah, more right now. If I could clone that one, yes. My two-year-old... Uh huh. She is a force to be reckoned with. She our got our youngest are savages. Yes. What is it with these COVID babies? They are built different. I'm telling you. She got mad at me this morning because I wouldn't let her have a popsicle for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to go get dressed this morning, my husband let her have some chips, fine and dandy, but she wanted the whole party size bag and got because mad. Because why not? And then she got mad because I wouldn't let her take the whole party size bag of Doritos in my car. What are you, what kind of mom are you? Abusive, apparently. I'm telling you. Well, I mean, but this brings up, okay, this brings up some things, right? So, like, pre-babies, you and Michael, Mm -hmm. you got up, said good morning, had your coffee, you know, if you wanted your devotional time, you wanted alone time, you worked out, you got ready, you did you, Mm -hmm. he did him, you were a team. Yeah, it was easy. So, here comes children. Mm Mm-hmm. And maybe those little things that each of you did before, Mm -hmm. you know, give him a pass, whatever, Mm -hmm. didn't irritate you. You know, he may have missed the laundry basket for the thousandth time. And oh, that, that does go. You know, skin. and then... Your or, socks don't need to be next to the hamper. They can be in You the know, hamper. he forgets some things. You're like, oh, it's okay. Right? It's, it's whatever. It is whatever. And you're still getting sleep. You're still having that time for conversation. Yeah. You know, you've not had these boundary talks because in-laws come involved. Yeah. You haven't had the who's taken off work when the kid gets sick. Yep. You haven't had all that. Now, quickly, I like to say a partnership becomes a triangle. Yeah. And things get wonky. Mm-hmm. And it's not as streamlined as it used to be. It's not. And now this little baby, mm-hmm. let's talk newborn stage, depends on yeah. mom mostly. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't care how you're feeding. Like, oh, yeah. It's going to be you. And you start noticing a role shift, right? And your basic life functions become something you have to ask for permission for. Yeah. Or like, or get up early before uh-huh. the rest of the household to get it accomplished. I mean, you find yourself saying ridiculous things like, I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah. Don't let them unalive themselves right? for the next or, 30 seconds. I need to shower. Yeah. Or can I have two seconds to eat, please, without yeah. someone on me? So this... Hey, good morning turns to, I am going to the bathroom. You know, like you're screaming for like. like, I need my time. Like it's like an airplane pilot thing, you know, like eyes, you you know, I have eyes. Okay, now Whitney, your eyes. Like you have these kind of weird, obvious things that you're, and you're noticing that you're going to fight about things that you have never fought about before. One Mm. of me and Bill's recent fights that we had that, I mean, ridiculous, okay. Baby James pooped in the bathtub. Yeah, it happens. It's never pleasant. Okay, so, but you know why we fought, Whitney? Why? Okay, this is wild. Wild to me. 
I have a, I'm a seasoned pro of how to clean poop out of a bathtub. Got it. Bill is not. Okay. So he came home and he had, baby James had just literally pooped. Will was in. I was like, getting Will out, getting the shower going. I was getting baby James out. Yeah. I'm like, can you get the poop out of the bathtub? Yeah. Okay. This, how this man tried to get the poop out of the bathtub. <laughs> You have some feels about this. I'm still really upset about it. I haven't processed it. <laughs> I can tell. And I'm like, I um, I take a solo cup and I do a scoop method. Mm. If it's large, easy, yeah. and then I drain, then I clean. Yeah. And just toss the cup. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Whitney, he thought he would just add water to like dissolve the poop to make it all go down the drain. I was like, what kind of psychopath am I married to? And so then it becomes me to him criticizing and saying he can't do anything right, even cleaning the bathtub. And the kids are like in the shower fighting, try, you know, because Will's convinced now poops in his hair. You know, it's going to go absorb through his skin, like into his oh, blood. Like fabulous. we've took it to a level. And we're arguing how the bathtub should have been cleaned in that moment. Okay. So... How quickly life changes. And you, but yes. how ridiculous it is. We both stood on opposite sides of it and was very convicted in how we thought it should have been handled. Mm -hmm. And if you would have told pre kids, Sarah and Bill, that we would be having a fight about poop, a in, fight the tub. About poop in the tub, we'd be like, not that's us. That's crazy. That's you know, crazy. That's talk. crazy. That's not us. You know, we don't fight over little things. We don't fight over little things. We talk things through, we share responsibilities. All this to say. And pre kids, you did. Pre kids, pre -kids you that did. That was the case. I mean, I think it's too, right? Like, what changes is now your sensory overload. You're oh, tapped yes. out. You're touched out. The noises, the lack of sleep. Yeah. So, like, your normal baseline is like yes. exhausted. And we're not talking yeah. just a baby. Toddlers, brutal. Yes. Um, even older kids, you're running the million ways. Yeah. Mom, why? Mom, can I? Yeah. And then here comes your partner, and maybe they want to come in for a hug or a kiss at the end of the day, and you have like, I am touched out. Yeah, I will lose my That mind. one touch from them sends you spiraling. Uh -huh. Or you do the kind of turn away, and they're just like, what was that about? Don't You know, because they haven't yes. seen you all day. They also haven't seen the gazillion things that have came at you. Yeah. So they take it personally. Yeah. And so now... I've had to, thanks to a lot of uh, podcast therapy episodes, I'll call it, yes. learn to express, I am sensory overloaded right now. Yeah. I'm touched out. Much. I've had a kid on my hip. I've had someone in my face or ear. All day. All day. Literally all day. This ain't a you thing. Uh-huh. I need to ground. I haven't had a second to ground. Sarah yeah. hasn't done her ice. Yeah. I haven't stepped outside. Yeah. I haven't hummed. I haven't gargled. I haven't you, done anything. You probably haven't showered. I haven't showered. If I had used the restroom, the children were involved in it. Oh, yes. You know, like, they're there. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think we're talking about it enough that the relationship's going to change. How couldn't it? Yeah. Well, exactly. That's the thing. Change is inevitable. And especially when you're talking about something like kids. Yeah. That is earth shattering and you don't go back that's what i tell everybody yeah. you know they're like oh i can't wait to have kids i'm like that's great i'm excited for you just let you know you don't go back yeah like your life before kids is never coming to you yeah they're always going to be there in your heart in your mind and something yeah now we're in the trenches yeah okay we get this yeah and i don't want to hear you're going to miss these days okay i'm sure i will I, but I, at the same time i don't I don't know that I'm going to miss my child laying in the floor crying because I won't let her have a popsicle for breakfast. No, I mean... I don't think I'm going to miss that part of these days. We just got back from the beach and baby James flung himself on the boardwalk, you know, hot, sweaty, sand, did not want to move. So then I had to like, you know, the gentle parenting did not work in that situation. No. Honestly, didn't even try. Picked up, you know, the football position. Well, yes. And just said, we're going. You know, and everybody's looking at... It's still not inappropriate, though. Everybody's looking at me like, I've kidnapped. I'm like, do you think I would kidnap the child that's having a tantrum? Yeah. No, I would not. No. This is what we call tough love people. Yeah. So, but then you also start having a war of, in your mind, I did this, he didn't do that. Yeah. You keep track. The comparison you keep tallies. Game. 
Well, I was up five times last night. You snored. Mm-hmm. Well, I've called out five times for work this month because the kids are sick. Yeah. Your okay. turn. You know, like, it, then yeah. it comes a tit for tat, which you never used to have that. Yeah. Or it's a situation where, like we said, let's go back to the laundry basket. Oh, they could never throw it in the laundry basket. I mean, what yeah. is it where they can't? Like, what more do you If it's need? literally lying next to the hamper, why can't you move it a millimeter? Or the dish in the sink when it could be in the dishwasher that's like one more step. Why are you reading my mind? Well, because we're the same person. That's true. You know? And then, then they, a common thing I hear is, well, just what do you need? Or tell me what to get done. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like, I shouldn't have to tell you. Yeah. It's one of those, you're like, it doesn't actually take off of my mental load if I have to go through 20 things that I need you to help me with. I could have done it. I could have done it. And then it just makes me be like more angry. Why did you not know we do this every single day this way? So again, I think little things become big things. Yeah. Because we are sensory overloaded. We have not crash course into parenting. Yep. And. We're not alone if two-thirds of couples are taking, what, three years to kind of figure it out? Yeah. And the odds are you're going to have another child. I was just thinking that you're going to have an additional child. Or second, you're going to third, try fourth. to, yeah. right, mock infertility or have a yeah. loss or whatever. So it's going to be a cycle. As soon as you get out of the fog, you tend to forget how bad and how hard it is. And then we jump back in and we're like, ooh, what have I done to myself? And, you know, you're having to learn to, I, you know, even last night, we were trying to have a simple, like, I don't, it wasn't even important what we were trying to have a conversation about, but it was like, yeah. we, he would say two words and dad, mom, da, 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 you know, or like, yes. and like, so then you can't even have a conversation mm-hmm. together. And then yeah. that time when you do, you're exhausted. Yes. And you're in your mind, you're ready to fight over the things, the little things will set yep. you off. So if you're listening to this and you're like, you're pregnant, you're like, oh my gosh, this sounds wonderful. What have I done Let's talk about things you can do prior. Okay, so what we should have done, and we'll even go back to when you're trying to get pregnant, right? Like, you need to have open conversation. Yep. Things are going to change. It's I never inevitable. had. I never had that conversation. We, we should have had either. that conversation. We didn't either. And you need to also just kind of know it might not be easy to get pregnant or may not look like you thought. Correct. In your head, start thinking when a baby comes, we're talking childcare, we're talking about postpartum recovery. We're talking boundaries, families, yes. job switches, moving. I mean, have an uncomfortable conversation yeah, yeah. and say, how are we going to handle this? Yeah, exactly. So when you do get pregnant, you even start feeling the shift oh, yeah. of responsibilities. Yeah. Because we're sick now. Hello, we're first trimester. Yeah. We're tired. Mm-hmm. We're carrying the baby. Yep. Physical Rapidly. intimacy. Maybe slowly going out the door because you're throwing up 15 yeah. times a day. Mm. It's not a priority. It's not a priority when trying to get pregnant. It probably was. Yeah. So he's like, wait, what happened? Yeah. And the more pregnant you get. The less you will want it. The less you'll want it. You've got postpartum where you're recovering. Yeah. I mean, it's your body has literally gave birth yeah. one of two ways. You are recovering. You're recovering. And we've said this before, six weeks checkup is not the green light for everything just to resume back because you're leaking, you're bleeding. All the things. All the things. Even like the mental load to get ready for baby falls on mom, right? Yeah. The baby registry, like talking to the family Washing members. Washing the clothes. The clothes, the telling her work about her leave. Yeah. She's going to, she has to physically Product go. Research. To the OB's office a zillion times, mm-hmm. right? Like to figure out insurance. That starts the kind of invisible load, which really he's thinking does. about it, but she, it's her body. Well, it's, I hate to say it, it's her responsibility because guess what? It's her maternity uh-huh. leave. She's trying to he set herself up. He can't file that for her. No. And as far as insurance, she's the patient. So he could call Blue Cross Viva United whomever. But she's the one. But she's the patient. And then she's the one who has to give birth correct so you it already starts and like he can go out and still and do his thing he's Mm -hmm. not gonna be tired he's not gonna feel like you know his bladder is gonna explode Explode. so it starts shifting yeah and i just don't think they're gonna get it even how many i mean they're just never gonna get it so lean into your friends who've been there done that there 
And then you I, really strongly in pregnancy, you have to have these conversations. What are you going to expect in the postpartum period? Exactly. And that is like, how am I going to get sleep? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. Yes. What could that look like for me? Exactly. What are you going to do if I start showing these symptoms? Yeah. Who's Let's my have a game plan. Who's my safe person? I need to go ahead. If I'm struggling in pregnancy, I think, again, it goes back to like her anxiety or her depression, which we know 50% yeah. of moms experience recognizing that, getting yeah. therapy in, getting talking to her doctor. Yeah. So when baby comes... You ideally have had these hard conversations. Yep. So when you snap e- at each other, yeah, okay, yep. that doesn't mean we're deteriorating. We'll never be the same. Correct. This it's, is expected. It's a process to get back to where mm-hmm. you were. There is a really good book, and they also have cards, so you can kind of get either one. But it's called Fair Play. I love that book. It's a really good one because it hits it objectively. It's not like I do blah 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 blah, and you do nothing. It's, okay, well, what task are we talking about? What are all the things that go into that task? Yeah. So a really good example with that would be meal planning slash grocery shopping. So you may be thinking, okay, well, we're going to do tacos one night. We'll do chicken parm one night, one night of takeout. We'll do pizza another night, and then we'll do chicken casserole one night. Okay, you can write that on your calendar, Mm -hmm. but then it's like, okay, I need to make sure I get spaghetti, I get rice, I get chicken, I get ground beef, I get all of the taco fixings, I get blah, 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 plus your staples that you normally get. So like milk, tea, juice, fruit, all those things that go along with it. And even if you do Walmart pickup like we do, because it makes our life significantly easier. Mm -hmm. Love that. You know. You're still going through, okay, do I have all of this? Are we running low on shampoo? Do we need more laundry detergent? Do we need paper products? All of those things are running through your head. So when you list it out, it's like, oh, yeah. even grocery pickup is way more involved than we give it credit for. There's so much mental load of it. There is. And so the reason I suggest either the cards or the book for fair play is you go through all of that and you say, okay, this is actually what it entails. How can we divvy this out? I think a good example, too, is like, take out the trash. Yes. You need to replace the trash bag the liner. liner. Mm-hmm. There's, you have to do start to end of a task for it truly yes. to be completed. It's so funny. I, I bring up Instagram a lot, but there are some actually really good accounts out there. And one of them talked about how did you close out the task? And I love that term. it talked about how... You know, one night the husband said, hey, I'm going to bathe the kids. You just take a chance to chill. Great. Fabulous. He goes, bathes the kids, gets them in jammies. You know, let's just say you split bedtime 50-50 because we do that in our household. Yeah. Michael gets the older one. I've got the younger one just because that's how it works for us right now. Yeah. But then they talked about the next morning, the wife got up to go get a shower and there's toys all over the tub. I will. So there she is having to pick up toys and she's like... Okay, thank you for doing 80% of the work. It's not that I dismiss that or don't appreciate that, but it still kind of shows me, well, shoot, if I had just done it myself, I wouldn't have to do this now first thing in the morning when we're going to be shorter on time and, and it's like things like that. So resentment. Clo- yes. You get so angry. So close out the task. Oh, I love that phrase. Yeah. Closing out. That I think makes some, I think it makes you feel like, why did I even ask or why do you even do it? Yeah. I still have to do something. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm trying. Yeah. So you have to have that awkward conversation and say, yeah, I need you to close the task. Yeah. Right. And I recognize and appreciate your help. Mm-hmm. Can we work on closing out the task fully? So that is done. Thing. Let's just say, like, if that was Michael and I, you know, let's just say that roles are reversed though. Let's just say Mm -hmm. I bathe the kids. We do bedtime as a routine. He gets up, but I've left the bath toys in there. I didn't close out the task kind of thing. Yeah. Then he can come to me and say, hey, I appreciate you doing blah, 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 blah. However, I need you to close out the task. Okay, cool. But chances are there's a task he hasn't closed out. Yeah. So there's probably something that I do and I don't close out the task. He probably does something and doesn't close out the task. I'm going to say I'm pretty sure you close out task. I try to, but you know what? I'm human. Uh Uh-huh. I'll give you a 99.9, though. Yeah. I know you. It's the Enneagram 1 in me. Uh Uh-huh. 
But you bring a point that we're not all perfect. Yeah, we're not all perfect. And he, we all almost need that reminder. And we have to blind close spots, right? Yeah. Like you know, like there's things that oh yeah, there could be one percent that we don't do. Yeah, naturally, I'm going to think that my way is the best way because that's how I'm wired. We're humans. We always think our way is the best way. Kind but of thing. our partners, why we fell in love with them to start with, yeah. right? They bring something to our lives. Yes, that and a perspective that we don't have on our own. That mm-hmm. it complements and. So one of the best advice I ever got through this was, it's not a you against him. Mm-hmm. It's a we versus them. Yeah. And them could be the world. The chores. It could be the children some days, oh, honestly, yeah. because you have to go to battle together. There's enough coming at you as a couple. Yeah. Two are stronger than one. Mm-hmm. That reframing what, like if we're in an argument... I need to be fighting for us versus Mm -hmm. a Sarah win. Yeah. Now, does that happen? No. No. Do I try? Yes. And do I go back and say, I've had to eat humble pie a lot and say, I felt this. I apologize if I came across as that. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to own it and try to be better. Yeah. Now. I'll, we've been transparent. We had to go to a rage room when baby James was. Heck yeah. Because we were angry at each other. And yeah. we're like, what have we done? Yeah. Things have shifted so bad from one to yes. two. But I think showing up to each other and saying, this is hard. Yeah. We're changing. Yes. And knowing you will get back to a version of you at some point. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a minute. Oh, yeah. And there will be things, like I said. You will have fights over, Yeah. why did you not get the poop out of the bathtub the right way? Admittedly, though, unless, and this is probably a gross thing to say, but unless it's like diarrhea, like. It was not. Whitney, you know it was what formed. I, mean? I know. Yeah. It was just. Like, we can't add more water to it. Thank you. I feel, I've actually polled people on this. I've not let it go either. That's the thing. You everybody should do. we got to let this go. Yeah. Um, like Elsa, let it go. I didn't let it go. But, you know. It's just not you guys, though, that are feeling this. Like, this is yeah. us, too. We experience yeah. this. We go through this. Yeah. I mean, do I yell at him when he's pooping for 50,000 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And go, why are we doing this? Yeah. Because you're out there just saying, SOS, I'm drowning. Do I call my friends? Do I send messages out and say, y'all, what, what have we done? Yeah. Yeah. Does he probably think the same thing? Yeah. yeah. But do I love him and now I get to see good moments? Yes. Yeah. Are we going to, like, charge on? Yeah. Absolutely. But this, I think you have to remind, remind you guys, and, you know, date night is so crucial. Yes. A newborn stage, it can be hard. Very but do hard. it. And realize that you're going to, like, have that moment when you're together. Mm-hmm. And you look at it and be like, it's still us. Yeah. Look it's the us. kids. It's them. Mm-hmm. We're still okay. Yeah. They threw kerosene on the fire. Uh-huh. We had a lovely little campfire, and then here comes the kerosene. Yeah. So just remind yourself, it's your two-thirds. You're with us. Mm -hmm. And the people that say it hasn't changed after kids? Liars. Liars. So we're here. So hug your partner. Yeah. This too shall pass. And just know we're all in it. Yeah. It it does get better as the kids get older. Mm -hmm. I can confirm with my oldest. Yeah. Waiting for the second to, you know, pick it up here a little bit. (laughs) We need need Whitney's second to give us good content, though. (laughs) That she has. That's why she's here. All right, guys. Till next time. See ya. Maternal mental health is as important as physical health. The Preview Alliance podcast was created for and by moms dealing with postpartum depression in all its variables, like anxiety, anger, and even apathy. Hosted by CEO, founder, Sarah Parkhurst, and licensed clinical social worker, Whitney Gay, each episode focused on specific issues relevant to pregnancy and postpartum. Join us and hear how other moms have overcome mental health challenges as well as access tips and suggestions on dealing with your own challenges as moms. You can also browse our podcast library and listen to previous episodes at any time. Please know you're not alone on this journey. We're here to help.